This is Ivan Saric, a seasoned, experienced Croatian grandmaster, and this is him battering away at Fabi, trying to break down his defence, but this is Fabiano Caruana, cool as a cucumber, weathering the storm. I mean, this guy takes the coolest cucumber photos going, right? He's like the opposite of Hikaru Nakamura. And so's his chest these days. You cannot break him down. But we're going to see Saric try, and Fabi gives a masterclass in defence. So we get E4, C5 from Fabi, and watch how fighting his chess is in this game. Because after this open Sicilian, the knight's developing, Fabi goes for the Nidorf. I mean, he could go for all his his solid stuff with e5 on move one but he wants to win his ratings going through the roof right now he's on fire so we get bishop d3 there are a million and one moves for white to choose from there not literally of course saric goes for this one and now g6 from fabi what do we call this one is it a dragon is it a dragon dwarf don't know but clearly Fabi's now preparing to fianchetto his rook and after f3 he goes rook g Wait, okay, sorry, bishop g7. I better not quit my day job. We get bishop e3, knight b to d7, queen d2, and Fabi's the first one to start pushing pawns in attack. And white now doesn't start over here with this kind of thing, but a4 is played. And it's a trickier move than it looks on the surface because there's tons of pressure here. So b4 is the best move, but after the knight drops back, it's not actually possible to defend this pawn. If you go a5, it's positionally awful, giving up this b5 square. Rook b8 runs into knight c6, winning an exchange. And queen b6 runs into knight e6, opening up the bishop's attack. And then you win this bishop on g7. So with the pawn unable to be covered, Fabi plays d5, playing in the centre. Absolute best move. He's done his homework. Now, e5, not possible. The knight covers. That's critical. If you could go e5, you'd be steamrolling black. So what do we see instead? Well, takes is actually best. You do centralise the knight, but okay, white plays from there, and you don't have such a nasty pawn structure. What we see in the game is bishop h6. This is a double-edged move. Because it allows Fabi to take here. The queen recaptures. Now why would you bring white's queen into the danger zone? Not allow your king to castle. Well it's because you get to shatter this white centre. This is what we see now happening. So what's Fabi saying after queen c7? Well yes you've got an attack. But long term, you've got a weak pawn. I've got this amazing e5 square to work with. How are you going to actually break through to my king? So Saric castles. We now get knight f6 pressuring this pawn. Bishop b7 coming, that kind of thing. And so this is where white just goes for it. Saric picks up his rook and crashes through on f6. This is the thumbnail picture. Now, Fabi's got a recapture, of course, and queen g7 is the follow-up point. If the knight stood on f6, you'd now have rook g8 evicting that queen, because the knight would also cover h7. But without that knight, rook f8 forced is the only sensible move. The queen takes this pawn, and this is dangerous. The king is completely cut here, as we can see. One escape square. The rook's coming to the center soon. Knight f4 to d5 is a huge positional threat as well. There's a second knight looming in the air. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. So this really is a deadly attack. So how do you defend? Well, start bringing pieces into defense. That's one of the key first principles. So bishop b7 does that. You cover this key d5 square and you activate this rook. So knight f4 comes on the board, very sensible. We don't see this pawn captured, of course. Do not start grabbing material when you're on the defensive. Instead, you want to start trading pieces, and that's what queen d8 seeks to do. So white naturally doesn't want to trade, gives this check, queen e7 covers, and queen a5. Again, running with that principle of not trying to defend... What was I going to say? Trade pieces. This cold's gone to my head. 
So queen a5, you don't want to take here. The knight drops back, preparing rook e1. You're opening lines to your own king. And so Fabi goes rook c8. You can go rook d8, also a good move. But his idea here is queen c5, trade off those queens, and again, start trading pieces, long-term blacks winning. So we see knight d3 played here to cover that square, but it wasn't the best move. Queen b6 was better. Preparing to meet queen c5 with takes on b7. Yes, this one drops, but then this one gets access to d5. White is fighting. So Fabi wouldn't have done that after queen b6. You know, he had different good moves. But what we see in the game is knight d3. Covering this square, yes, but it allows Fabi this tactical shot and he really just takes the bull by the horns, plays the absolute best move, pawn to f5. What do we say about this in terms of a defending principle? Well, it's hard to say anything really, just be really good at chess. Because in a way, this breaks defensive principles. You're opening lines towards your own king, but there's some concrete points. The king is now preparing to run, and if you take opening lines, preparing rook e1, there's tactical problems. Sometimes in chess, you just gotta go brute force, tactical calculation. This is what engines have shown as well. You may have a positionally worse position at times, but if the tactics are working for you, the tactics are working, right? So this is good for uh, black here. Yes, you can check, but the king runs and this attack is actually going nowhere, no matter what you do. So taking, no good. We instead see knight f4, but this is a problem, of course. The knight was there, it dropped, f5, it comes back. This is not a position where you can afford to waste tempos. And the reason Fabi never did this sooner when the knight was here was that one of these knights would have jumped here. But now when you have to waste the time coming back, prepare the threat, well now Fabi's got time to take this pawn and open the F file so that when the knight lands here, he can respond with the brilliancy of queen f6. This gets a double exclam on the game review. Why? Because you're giving up a rook if white wants to take it. But there's a problem. This one drops with check. The king goes. Then you pick up the knight. And once again, this king's actually perfectly safe. You haven't got enough pieces in the attack. So we didn't see takes here. Instead, h3 play to give the king room because queen check and then queen f1 was a threat to then have takes, rook takes, the king's getting branked. So we see rook f7 now covering this square some more, obviously coming away from the knight's attack. Rook e1 trying to attack and we should say king h2 in that last move was better doing some king safety. This looks like an absolute 500 ELO blunder what the hell is this all about from a 2650 check giving you a rook? Well, it's desperate stuff from Saric. He's completely lost. So he's going for tricks now with queen e5. You know, he distracted that queen away. The knights are in the vicinity. They're hopping. Dangerous combo with the queen. But rook e7, cool and calm from Fabi. And there's just nothing for white. You can land a check down here, but the king runs. You can check, but you give up the exchange. You're hugely winning attacking this knight. e3 coming to threaten mate so this one's no good you can do this sneaky check because the rook is pinned but again the king runs where's your follow-up you've got nothing you haven't even got checks so these ones just aren't working so that's why knight b3 preparing knight c5 then it would be covering this square and this stuff gets more dangerous but queen f2 and we see resignation again fabi just all over it mixing some defense of a key square with also an attack on a key square. So rook c2 is coming to threaten mate. e3 is coming to threaten mate. It's literally game over, nothing for white to do. That's 30 moves of defensive masterclass. Fabi looks very dangerous this tournament. I hope you enjoyed. Smash subscribe to never miss a future game. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, then check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.